We have two segments on the show. We have three dynasty sales to talk about, three guys I like to trade away with the right offer, and the other segment is a fun one. If I had to pick a new player from each of the four positions to lead that position in fantasy points per game this year at quarterback, at running back, at wide receiver, and at tight end, who do I think it will be and why? Now, if you could take a minute to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, that would mean the world to me. If you could take a minute to subscribe to the podcast, that would mean a ton. Let's get into these dynasty cells. The first one might surprise you. This wide receiver had a pretty productive rookie season. Usually a rookie doing what he did, you say, sign me up. I have a stud for the next several years on my dynasty roster. This guy's going to take a step forward in year two no matter what. But I'm looking to sell to see what I can get for him, and that's Jordan Addison. 900 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns in year one. That's a very good rookie season production-wise. In eight games with Kirk Cousins, 15.8 fantasy points per game. Uh, Justin Jefferson missed three of those games, and as a result, he had more opportunity. In eight games without Kirk Cousins, only 10.5 PPR points per game outside the top 40. And Justin Jefferson basically missed five of those games. You would think Addison's opportunity as the wide receiver one should lead to more production, but no. Only 8.6 fantasy points per game. That was with a 82% catchable target rate, so the quality of targets weren't terrible during that span. I'm expecting that touchdown number for Addison to go way down this year without Kirk Cousins, who supplied him with seven of his 10 touchdowns. And here's an example of why the touchdowns matter so much for Addison. Among the 34 wide receivers last year with at least 100 targets, Addison's 1.63 yards per route run was second to last. And that number isn't great even for rookie wide receivers. Second to last in first downs per route run as well for Addison. These underlying metrics support a relatively inefficient season despite the production on the stat sheet. I think he benefited greatly from a team who passed a ton with a good quarterback and with defenses having to pay attention to Justin Jefferson. And touchdowns just aren't a sticky stat from year to year. He was fourth in touchdowns scored last year, but he was 15th in end zone targets. And eight of his 11 total end zone targets for the year came in the first eight weeks with Kirk Cousins. I'm not saying Addison isn't a good player and he can't produce with any other quarterback, but I think you can get more for him right now in Dynasty than he's worth, coming off a big statistical rookie year. And now Now he'll have to battle Justin Jefferson for target share, obviously, and then eventually TJ Hawkinson when he's back in a very questionable quarterback room with Sam Darnold and a rookie quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. Who knows what kind of production we're going to get from those guys. Can you go get T. Higgins using Jordan Addison? Can you go get Tank Dell or Zay Flowers? Maybe add a little bit and get D.K. Metcalf or one of these young stud tight ends like Trey McBride? I mean, you can get Rashi Rice right now and get something on top of that as of right now. I'd rather have Rice in Dynasty over Addison pretty easily, even if he gets a six game suspension this year. So for Addison, just see what your league mates might be willing to give up for someone they might think takes a considerable jump in year two based on his rookie year. All right, let's get into Josh Jacobs and why I'd be looking to sell right now. First of all, it's just a good idea to sell running backs this time of the off season. So much can happen between now and the start of the year. I don't like buying running backs this time of the year. If I'm buying a running back and I have a win now roster, I'm waiting until as close to the season as possible. Okay, anything can happen between now and the start of the year. Marshawn Lloyd, you know, can have a great training camp. Jacobs can get hurt. Running back prices are usually more inflated during the off season. You can usually get more for them, right? And in the middle of the actual season, there are going to be non-competing teams who will likely be looking to move running backs and you can get them for a lot cheaper. And you'll know whether they're producing or not, right? You're mid-season. Like, you'll know their situation. But getting back to Josh Jacobs real quick, he's still being drafted as an RB1 for fantasy this season. He's still being valued as an RB1 in Dynasty. So there's some perceived value here, right? This is a good Packers offense. And the lead back on this offense is pretty attractive. And, And don't get me wrong, I'm not like totally out on Jacobs this year or anything like that. But there is a world where a competing team will still want to buy Josh Jacobs right now. And here's why I'd want to sell. The prime ages for a running back is up until 26 years old. He's 26 now, which is still relatively young, by the way, right? He's not approaching like 30 years old yet. But He's had five seasons under the age of 26 with only one season as a RB1 in fantasy points per game. He's also approaching the 1,500-yard carry mark and will likely hit that this season at which we tend to see a sharp decline for running backs. We might have already seen it. He had an amazing 2022 season, career best. And then last year, he was simply terrible among 23 running backs with 200-plus carries last year. He was dead last in yards per carry. 
second to last in yards after contact per attempt, third to last in missed tackles forced per attempt. His minus 0.37 rushing yards over expectation per attempt was also one of the worst in the league. He has a new starting job on a very attractive offense. There's a window to sell here, okay? If there's any more hype for Marshawn Lloyd, who is a very good running back, by the way, and there's even more reason for Packers head coach Matt LaFleur to split this backfield like he wants to do, like he did with Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis a couple years ago. Remember that? Absurd, but it happened. You might be able to get a 2025 first round rookie pick for him. You know, I'm seeing his teammate Jaden Reed as very similar value on KTC. Again, give me Rashi Rice if I can get him. You know, other veteran wide receivers like Christian Kirk, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, uh, even a veteran quarterback like Dak Prescott or Brock Purdy uh, in a one quarterback league. I even prefer Joe Mixon right? Because Mixon has his job locked in on a good offense and he's way cheaper. You might be able to get Mixon who has similar value for this season and get something on top of him in Dynasty, like an extra pick maybe for Josh Jacobs. Get Najee and a little bit more, right? Get Derrick Henry and a little bit more, right? That, that's the one I'll be looking to do because either way, I'd rather get the guy who's more likely to be a RB1 this year. I'm just not sure how much high level play Josh Jacobs has left in the tank at this point. There's been a lot of talk about George Pickens and how he could potentially thrive, you know, with a new quarterback. He's even talked about his limitations because of his quarterback. And now he doesn't have to contend with a true target earner like Deontay Johnson. So, like, I totally understand why people love George Pickens this year. But is Pickens set to break out as the now number one wide receiver for Pittsburgh? Maybe, but I think that would be a pretty big assumption. Uh, I like to target receivers in Dynasty who don't have to depend on the big play. And that's really what Pickens' calling card is. Listen, his first two years in the league, very productive, right? Admittedly in a not so amazing offensive situation, 800 yards as a rookie, 1,100 yards as a second year, you know, maybe 1,300 in his third year. But how much is this situation improving this year? Is Arthur Smith's offense bringing any excitement for the pass game? Not really. Arthur Smith couldn't find ways to get more talented wide receivers like A.J. Brown and Drake London to have big seasons. And how much of an improvement is Russell Wilson going to be? Justin Fields got the most out of DJ Moore last year, but DJ Moore is a much more talented wide receiver than George Pickens. Pickens is a very good field stretcher. He's one of the best contested catch wide receivers in the NFL. And I think he is clearly the best wide receiver on that Steelers offense and will demand a nice target share. Maybe even hit that 25% mark in his third year. But on a low volume passing offense with a non-ideal quarterback situation once again, I think you can find the George Pickens stands in your league because there are so many people who think Pickens can be an elite receiver in the NFL. I would say let them have him. Okay, 2.25 yards per route run for Pickens last year. That was really good. Okay, that ranked 16th among all wide receivers with 100 or more targets. But among the top 20 wide receivers in yards per route run, he was the only wide receiver to have less than 0.1 first downs per route run. What does that mean? It means that he's really dependent on those big plays and that he could be due for a regression, especially after leaving the league with 18.1 yards per reception. That's not a sustainable number at all. That's something we called out for Jalen Waddle the year before right? He also had the lowest targets per route run rate among those wide receivers as well. So while Pickens can be a very good receiver, I'm not sure we're going to see that huge jump that many people might think he can make this year as the Steelers' number one wide receiver. And it's very possible we see yet another boom-bust type of fantasy season, you know, from a receiver who's very dependent on those big plays again. Give me the wide receivers who will be getting a lot more opportunity at all levels of the field. I don't think that's Pickens' game, and I think many might think he can turn into that guy, right? You can buy Mark Andrews right now for George Pickens. You can get a first next year for Pickens if you aren't competing. I'm not opposed to getting guys who have the upside to be target earners underneath. On top of having that big playability, like Ladd McConkey and Brian Thomas Jr., maybe with a little bit more sprinkled in. Given Pickens has proved already that he does belong in the NFL, right? So, you know, if these guys end up having a season like George Pickens, you might end up being happy and get that return but these guys might have a little bit more upside as potential you know more complete wide receivers at some point in their careers maybe aim to get a t higgins or a rashi rice plus a little bit more thrown in while his value is down you can get christian kirk plus a little bit more thrown in i think there are options here to move a guy while his perceived value is a little higher than his actual value at the moment in my opinion and anyone who thinks he's going to be the next superstar wide receiver should be able to give you a nice return before we move on, it is draft season, and there is no better way to get the upper hand on your league mates by drafting on underdog fantasy, and you can win some money while doing it too. 
So many tournaments you can be drafting in right now. You have Best Ball Mania, obviously, with $15 million in prizes. You have two new amazing contests that just came out, the Marathon, which awards cumulative scoring throughout the season. So literally rewards you for scoring the most points this year. That's only $15 to enter, $300,000 to first place, $2 million in prizes. You have the Sprint Contest, which awards the most points during the Fantasy Playoffs, weeks 15 to 17. One million dollars in prizes in that one, 100k to first place. Uh, you know, really cool stuff happening on Underdog Fantasy right now. And if you sign up today using code UPPERHAND, you'll get up to 250 dollars in bonus cash, and you'll get a special pick for your pick'em contest. But make sure to use the code UPPERHAND. You start drafting today, you'll get an idea of where these guys are going. It's going to help you prepare down the line to bring your league mates down in your home league, all while trying to win some cash. Download the Underdog Fantasy app today and use code UPPERHAND. All right, let's move on to the next segment. If I had to choose a quarterback who has the best shot at becoming the overall fantasy QB1 in 2024, but has never finished as the fantasy QB1 before, I'm going with Anthony Richardson. Super small sample size with Richardson. He appeared in only four games. He only finished two of them. But so many people will just declare injury prone. He has to prove he can stay on the field before I draft him. Okay, sure, you do that, but he has overall QB1 upside. Through the first four weeks of the season, that's less than two and a half games played, he averaged 23.1 fantasy points per game. He was a QB3 during that span of fantasy points per game. 40 yards rushing, 35 yards rushing, and 56 yards rushing. One rushing touchdown, two rushing touchdowns, and one rushing touchdown. Okay, Anthony Richardson is going to be a menace on the goal line alongside Jonathan Taylor. 10 plus rushing touchdowns is easy money for Richardson if he stays healthy, okay? You can probably add 700 yards rushing on top of that. Just that alone, even if he stinks in the passing game, that will net you a weak winning type of quarterback. Because among all quarterbacks last year, he averaged the most fantasy points per drop back. Josh Allen was second in that category last year. Lamar Jackson was third. You know who else used to lead this category? Lamar Jackson in his rookie year before he was the overall QB1 the next season in 2019. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, they were all top four in fantasy points per drop back the year before they finished as the overall QB1. And Anthony Richardson was number one in this category last year. And guess what? Besides fantasy points per game, fantasy points per drop back is actually the best indicator, has the highest correlation for a quarterback's fantasy points the following season. Okay, and, and, and we want to credit fantasy points Ryan Heath on that. Awesome work there, Ryan. I didn't even mention his receiving core. The word is A.D. Mitchell is looking pretty good in OTAs. He has a bona fide number one wide receiver in Michael Pittman. He has an underrated slot wide receiver in Josh Downs. He has a very good offensive mind running the show in Shane Steichen, who who's helped develop Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert. He knows how to build an environment around young quarterbacks. Teams will also have to account for Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield, who, by the way, only played two snaps with Anthony Richardson last year. So the combination of that rushing ability for Richardson, the scheme that's being adapted to Richardson, admittedly, by his head coach, and the weapons around him, that perfect storm could lead Richardson to become a league-winning QB1. If I had to choose a running back who has the best shot at becoming the overall fantasy RB1 in 2024, but has never finished as the fantasy RB1 before, I'm going with Brees Hall. I was a little worried going into last season, given the fact that he was coming off the ACL injury, but man, it almost looked like he didn't even miss a beat. Like he wasn't even coming off the injury. He averaged almost 4.5 yards per carry behind an atrocious offensive line. Among the 23 running backs with 200 or more carries last year, Brees Hall was second in yards after contact per attempt and fourth in missed tackles force per attempt. He was also sixth in rushing yards over expectation among running backs with at least 90 carries according to NFL Next Gen stats. All this after an ACL tear? Seriously? Imagine how much more efficient he's going to be behind a much improved offensive line, a year removed from the ACL injury, and oh yeah, a functional offense. He did all that last year without Aaron Rodgers. The Jets offensive situation was brutal last year. Teams didn't have to account for the pass game at all. And Brees still put up the numbers that he put up. He was still the overall RB8 in fantasy points per game. Now, defenses will have to account for the pass game. And speaking of the pass game, Aaron Rodgers loves to throw to the running back position. Remember, Aaron Jones averaged more than 50 catches per season while he was the Packers' primary running back with Rodgers. And Brees Hall is going to be running way more routes than Jones did. And guess who was number one in yards per route run last year among qualifying running backs? Brees Hall. Brees can easily be the second target behind Garrett Wilson. A functional offense, let alone a good offense, can thrust a talented running back like Brees Hall from the RB8 in fantasy points per game all the way to the RB1 this year. I can totally see it happening. Before I go to the wide receiver on this list, I just want to quickly ask 
for one thing. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. It really helps a ton. If I had to choose a wide receiver who has the best shot at becoming the overall fantasy wide receiver one in 2024, but has never finished as the fantasy wide receiver one before, I'm going with Jamar Chase. I mean, it's only a matter of time, right? He's definitely one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. He damn near had 1,500 yards his rookie season as a perimeter wide receiver, had at least 80 catches every single year, including 100 receptions last year when Joe Burrow was banged up and only played nine games. After the Bengals moved on from Tyler Boyd, there's now a clear void in the slot. The Bengals ran 11 personnel at the third highest rate last year. That's their thing. That's what they do. Their OC Brian Callahan left to the Titans, but Zach Taylor has been the one calling plays since he's been head coach. So there's no worry there. They drafted Jermaine Burton and I thought, okay, maybe he takes over the slot. And then I talked to Matt Harmon and he got the idea in my head now, Jamar Chase potentially playing more in the slot. And it got me looking into it and it makes so much sense, especially since Burton is a perimeter wide receiver and excelled against man and press coverage at Alabama. And we see a lot of superstar wide receivers running out of the slot now, and I think it's Chase's turn to move inside a lot more. Here's why. Among all wide receivers with at least 50 slot targets last year, Chase was second only to Tyreek Hill in yards per route run, and he was first among them in first downs per route run. The other two guys in the top four in both categories are the best slot receivers in the game, CeeDee Lamb and Amon Ross St. Brown. And remember, Chase was that efficient out of the slot without Joe Burrow for almost half the season and with him banged up for most of the games that he played in. And when Joe Burrow did play, Chase was still extremely efficient out of the slot and was targeted at a very high rate out of the slot. And despite Joe Burrow being banged up and missing all those games, the Bengals were still second in pass rate over expectation last year. And I'd expect that to be the case once again this year, especially after moving on from Joe Mixon. And just to address anyone thinking that T. Higgins being on the field negatively impacts Jamar Chase, he doesn't. Through the 41 games he played with Higgins versus the 11 games without Higgins, including playoff games, Chase averaged 18.1 PPR fantasy points points per game with Higgins on the field versus 18 PPR fantasy points per game without Higgins. More fantasy points, more receptions, more receiving yards per game with Higgins on the field. The talent and situation can finally come together this year for Jamar Chase and I could totally see him being this year's new fantasy wide receiver one. If I had to choose a tight end who has the best shot at becoming the overall fantasy tight end one in 2024 but has never finished as the fantasy tight end one before, I'm going with Trey McBride. There were six tight ends who had 100 targets last year and only one of them ran a route on less than 65% of his team's passing plays and that was Trey McBride. The good news is that from weeks 10 on last year, that number jumped up to 86% and his target share went all the way up to a whopping 28% which was higher than any other tight end during that span, and he was the tight end two in fantasy points per game as well during that span, right behind David Njoku and that incredible run with Joe Flacco. Now that Trey McBride is the clear tight end on the Cardinals, it's pretty much a lock that he's the number two target for Kyler Murray at the very least now that they added Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm expecting the target distribution to be extremely top-heavy between these two guys, and I wouldn't be surprised if they each demanded above 25%. Why? Because among qualifying tight ends last year, no one was targeted at a higher rate per route run than Trey McBride. No one besides George Kittle had more yards per route run than Trey McBride. No one, including George Kittle and Sam Laporta, had more first downs per route run than Trey McBride. McBride is also the only tight end who had zero drops last season. You can't say that about any of the top tight ends last year. I don't think any of the other receivers on this team will challenge these two, and I think Kyler Murray with a normal offseason, not having to recover from the ACL injury like he did last summer, will be a much better quarterback this year. So with a better version of Kyler, a full-time role combined with the efficiency that he showed last year, a new wide receiver to take away opposing defense's attention, the same OC he had last year, I think McBride is going to contend for that overall tight end spot this year very easily. Make sure to keep an eye out for our 2023 draft kit coming up very shortly to help you dominate your leagues this year. Stay tuned for that announcement coming here and on our Instagram at Upper Hand Fantasy. Peace.